I found that long titles usually mean that you don't do too much when you're in the Navy, and so that uh, I don't know that that's a great thing. I have been sitting here, uh, I'm 10th out of 11 storytellers, and I have been sitting down here in the front going, God, I am a shallow son of a bitch, because there is no life lesson at the end of my story. <laughs> It's 1986, and I am a couple of days away from celebrating the first anniversary of my graduation from the Naval Academy. I'm stationed on a destroyer at Norfolk Naval Station, and a buddy of mine calls on a beautiful May Friday afternoon and says, let's go to TGIF. Now, some of you who are not from around here and didn't live here in the 80s, may not know what I'm talking about there, but TGIF was this kind of tailgating cocktail party social event at Town Point Park where all the professionals, lawyers, businessmen, newscasters, I'm pretty sure I saw Joe Flanagan and Barbara Sierra walking around at that time. Carrie, I don't think you made it uh, by that time. But everybody who was anybody, and especially everybody who was single, went to TGIF on Friday. And he says, hey, let's go. And I said, that sounds like a great idea. And so we headed off. And we get there, and the strategy was that my buddy would find pairs of girls, pairs of women. And he'd go up and he'd begin talking. And then I would fall in on whichever girl was not speaking to him. And he was killing it. He went up to couples and began speaking, and they were enraptured by what he was saying. They were enthralled. And I was not killing it. It was like I was, my leadoff line was, you know, it, it's good news. It doesn't look like it's herpes. They just, <laughs> women were horrified by me. I was, I mean, I was throwing wet blankets on every situation like I was Nolan Ryan if Nolan Ryan was a bedwetter because it was bad. No one wanted to speak to me and my bud is becoming more and more frustrated with me as we go along and I'm becoming more and more convinced that I am the polar opposite of what any woman at that enormous gathering wanted. And so he says, let's regroup. Why don't you point out somebody that you want to meet, and I'll go up, and we'll start that way. And so I look out over this expanse of people, and I see off in the distance this woman. And I got to tell you, I'm sitting here right now, and there's a light in my face, and so there's, there's kind of this halo around some of you, and that's what she looked like to me. There was this entourage of guys following her. And she had on white wayfarers and this black dress. And she had this great walk. I mean, her hips kind of moved just right. <laughs> and her shoulders were thrown back. She had this cock of her head. And her head was just cocked a little bit. And in my mind, I knew she had a great laugh. I could just tell it. And I knew that every guy that was following her knew it. And so I pointed her out and I said, that's who I want to meet. And he goes, let's go, because he's killing it. So he's ready. And I'm like, no, I've seen my work today. I'm not having any of this. <laughs> and so we pulled out and we went home. Now, I should warn you that this part of the story is in my dreams when I think about this story, Matthew McConaughey portrays me in the next part of this movie, <laughs> in this story, okay? I am stationed, I, I said I was stationed on a destroyer. I'm actually, my ship is in the yards in Berkeley at North Shipco. And I live in Ghent. And so every afternoon after I get off the ship, I have to drive home to Ghent. And so, I start driving through town looking for this girl. And I told you that in my mind, I'm Matthew McConaughey, but if you think about this 
and you have seen even one or two episodes of Law & Order SVU, this sounds really creepy and stalkerish and Mariska Hargitay and Ice-T are going to shake me down because that's what I'm doing. I'm convinced that this girl that I saw, she's dressed like that. She had to be coming from work. I'm going to see her. And so I'm not, I'm not cruising real slow. I don't have, you know, chloroform riding shotgun with me and, hey, what, is, what does this smell like? I'm not doing that. No overcoats, no nothing like that, but I'm driving with a purpose and I'm looking around and I'm not kidding. All of May and all of June, because I know, I mean, I had never felt like this in my life and I knew the minute I saw her again, I guess I thought I was going to throw it in park and jump out and introduce myself, but I just knew I would know her if I saw her. And so fast forward a little bit and we get to July and it's actually... July 4th weekend, and another friend of mine calls, and this time he says, hey, let's, uh, let's go to Fort Story. And so if Fridays you spent at TGIF in Town Park, in Town Point Park, Sunday afternoons you spent at Fort Story at the Officers Club. Same crowd, just different clothes. And so I said, I'm game, let's go. And the only thing that hasn't changed from the first part of the story is I continued to suck with women. It was unbelievable. Every person that I talked to was just horrified by me. I was asking people to dance. They wanted nothing to do with me. They sold beer in copious amounts and I was drinking every bit of it. And my buds were watching me and I'd tell them, hey, I'm going to go ask somebody to dance. They wouldn't say anything. And all of a sudden I saw a girl out there and she looked great, and I said, hey, I'm going to go ask her to dance. And my friends did what true friends should say. They said, do not do it. She will blow you out of the water. And I said, i got to give it a shot. And so I can feel their eyes on me as I'm walking up to her. And I go up to her, and I say, would you like to dance? And she does this thing. She just kind of barely sucks in a little bit of air. She goes, <laughs> and I know what this thing is because I've seen it a lot. This is, this is the, the natural reflex of, oh, I'd love to, but I just can't. <laughs> and so I have to sneak in really quickly in between, and oh, I'd love to. And so when she goes, I go, please, I'm begging you. And I get right in her face. I am, I am this close to her, and I go, my friends are watching, they're right over my shoulder, and they will, they will kill me if you say no. They don't think you're going to say yes. Please just say yes one time, and I will never bother you again. <laughs> and she takes pity on me. And we start dancing. And it's pretty good. And to be honest with you, I'm not a bad dancer. And so we're having fun. And we're talking a little bit, and we're dancing, and the music's good, and all of a sudden... <laughs> We're dancing to a second song, and I'm keeping eye contact, but it, all I want to do is just turn around and go, because somebody has said yes to me. I can't believe it. And suddenly there's a third song on, and we're still dancing, and she doesn't seem to be moving away or anything. We're having a great time, and I decide, I book up my courage, and I go, this is it. I'm going to ask her to dance. I'm going to ask her to go out because surely if she's going to dance three dances with me, she'll want to go out. And so I lean in really close again and I go, I put on the, I'm just, I'm so embarrassed to tell you this, but I kind of lean into her and I think, what's the coolest thing I could say? And I go, if I call you, will you remember me? <laughs> And she says, if you call early enough. <laughs> and that's it. I'm smitten. I've forgotten the girl at Town Point Park and my bad luck is behind me because that's not what I was expecting and it's everything that I was expecting and I'm going to call that girl and on the way home my friends go, you know you can't call her for like two days. I'm like, what do you mean? 
can't call her for two days because you know you don't want to seem too interested and so by the end of the night I've decided that I'm not going to call her for two days but the next morning I'm figuring out what time the bank she works at is open because I'm dialing and I'm hoping that a receptionist is there early and I can get her as soon as the bank opens I call and she's a little hesitant I think she was hoping more for like the two-day waiting period <laughs> She actually tells me that her aunt and uncle are in town, and I have an out-of-body experience where I put the phone down and I go, she's using the aunt and uncle to avoid me. And she feels some pity, and she says, okay, I'll go out with you. Let me call my mom, get out of the aunt and uncle, and we'll go out. And so I arrange a dream date. <laughs> Ferris Bueller's day off followed by fried cheese at Bennigan's. <laughs> there is no woman that can resist Ferris Bueller's Day Off and fried cheese at Bennigan's, let me tell you. And so we're sitting down in Bennigan's, we're talking, she's great. This is just awesome. And we're trying to make a little bit of small talk and conversation's coming really easy. Nah, all of a sudden she asked me this question, she goes, you ever go to TGIF? And I say, yeah, I, I go every once in a while. How about you? And she goes, oh, I go all the time. And right then, she gets up and she excuses herself to go to the restroom. And she walks away. And when I look at her, she's got this walk. And her hips move just this right way. Her shoulders are back. Her hair is kind of her head's kind of cocked to the side, and she just walks away so confidently. And I'm sitting there, and my jaw is on the ground, and I'm sweating. And now, I had, I had hair back then, I should say that. <laughs> but one of the features of losing your hair is that when you're embarrassed for somebody, your head starts to sweat. But when you're like actually excited, every other part of your body except your head starts to sweat. I mean, I am pooling up in this chair. I can't believe it and I just can't wait for her to come back. And when she comes back, my mouth's open and before she can say anything, I go, you're her. And she says, what? And I go, do you have a pair of white wayfarers? And she goes, I have a pair of knockoff white wayfarers. <laughs> and I go, do you have a black dress with red piping? And now I think you know, you all want her to say yes. And we like ride off into the sunset. But that is not what she said. <laughs> she said what any normal woman would say if on a first date a guy asked you, do you have a black dress with red piping? She said, H how do you know what piping is? <laughs> and so after I explained that I had three sisters and had watched way too much Young and Restless as a high school senior, um, that did she have the dress? And she goes, yeah, and I go, you're her. You're the one. And she was. And she is. <laughs> and that's my story.